Good news, folks. Salvation has come to the Columbus Motor Inn. We've had a lot of blessings here, but this one is just better than the best. Let me tell you what happened. We have a regular that comes here. He's rather quite the partying, drinking, womanizing, drug kind of a guy who likes to flash the cash, come in with a dash and be gone with the girls that he brought in the same day and each time different. And I, you know that this kind of lifestyle can't be healthy. So you, you do your job as you're required to do and you understand that God doesn't hold one sin different than each other. He just holds somebody in disbelief as the biggest denominator. So I pray for this guy, and his name's Massey. Occasionally, he'll give me a call and say, Hey, Aaron, can I talk? And he'll tell me his griefs and his woes, and I'll tell him, I'll listen, I'll tell him I pray for him, tell him God loves and God cares. Well, it was on Christmas Day that he gave me a call, and he says, Boy, I did it worse than ever. He told me that he tried to commit suicide twice in the last day. And he says he just, he's just at his wit's end, and he just could not bring himself both times. He doesn't know what direction to go, and he says, I'm looking for something that I've known since I was a kid. I just don't know what to do from here. And then he threw me the question that, oh man, I'm going to remember that for ever in a day. He says, Aaron, how could I be forgiven? I want to be forgiven. He said, I'm just tired of all of this. So it was my privilege in his room over there in number five to sit with him and have a cup of coffee and to share with him how in the book of John, oh, this guy was really intelligent, Nicodemus was. He knew all the old stuff, the Old Testament stuff. He knew all the stuff about what was right and what was wrong. He just didn't understand how it should go from here to here. And as I explained to Massey, you know that Jesus died for you. You know a lot, but it's all head knowledge and it's all heart knowledge. There's a difference between believing in and believing on. You can believe in this chair that I'm sitting in, or you can be like me believe entirely on this chair and I am on this chair and I am resting my whole self oh that's a big difference and he said I think I'm understanding I showed him from Romans that we can't earn our way oh wow because everything that we do it's the wages of sin sure is death but what do you know that gift of God is eternal life and so there at the end of his bed <laughs> On Christmas Day, Massey knelt and he talked to God. And he talked to him. And he talked to him. I didn't hear what he said. So when he got back up, I asked him, So, what did you tell God? I'm curious. He said, I asked God to forgive me. I knew that I've been doing wrong. I mean, I came into this world doing wrong. And he says, I needed God to forgive me, and I wanted him to forgive me. I want him to make my soul different. And I think, uh, yeah, he did. There's such a relief that was on his face like I have never seen over the several months that I've known this fellow. I know then and there that God had forgiven all of his sins because that's what God's in the business of doing. And congratulations, I told him, welcome to the family of God. That's what it's all about. You know, I, I'm just the guy at the end of the line. There's some folks like you that pray regularly for the folks here. And I know in Massey's life, his whole life, people have assured him, God loves you. God bless you. Uh, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. And it all makes sense. But occasionally, you, me, and other Christians will get the glorious blessing of being able to see the song of the soul set free. Oh, that's wonderful. And this is something that you and I have prayed for daily is that we'll see fruit. Now the tough part is 
Massey has got so many hurts, hang-ups, and headaches that I worry about it. And some days I wonder if this might rank up there as and the seed fell on rocky soil. And even though I know that he has accepted God's forgiveness, he's got so many difficulties and so many troubles. I haven't seen him for several days, and that's the reason why I haven't uh, made this note earlier. I don't know what to tell you other than God saves people and then he allows them to head a different direction away from us. I may not know how he does spiritually, although he has my number and I'm always available, always glad to talk to him, always glad to build him up as uh, a brother in Christ, but now it's God's part to say what we are to do. Pray for him. He's got a rough road because he's got a difficult past. He's got a lot of things that he may not be able to get over so easily. And sometimes as the seed falls on rocky soil, oh, it's great when it springs up, but you know how it works. It either gets eaten up or the cares of life choke it away. But that means that we just need to keep praying. And for everyone else, the other kinds of soil, there's four kinds of soil out there. Hey, pray for those too, because who knows where God may lead you and me to be a blessing to somebody else today or tomorrow or next week. I tell you, this is a wonderful ministry that you have been involved with, praying from a distance and being a blessing to your neighborhood and me just being able to be here at the Columbus Motor Inn. God be thanked. Today is a wonderful day. So let's rejoice. <laughs> it's a happy day. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that you long to see for every day. And who knows what will happen tomorrow. Uh, sorry about all the motions. I'm good that way. God bless you for praying for us. God bless you for keeping in touch with us through the emails and through Facebook and everything else like that. Keep praying. There are many souls that long to be forgiven. And today was a good day because we got to see the one that was forgiven and accepted that forgiveness. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's more yet to come. Amen. Amen.